Hi, I'm Francis Hayson, Principal Analyst at Appledore Research, and I'm joined today by Stephen Spellacy, VP Product Marketing, Service Provider and Edge Business Unit at VMware, and Christina Rodriguez, Vice President in the Data Center Group and General Manager of the Wireless Access Network Division at Intel. The discussion subject for this session is the RAM Intelligent Controller, the RIC. The ability to monitor radio performance in near real time brings about another transformational benefit of the opening of the radio access network, the RAM. Intel's network platforms group helped drive the transition to disaggregated networks and is enabling unprecedented access to radio and traffic data. VMware is tapping into this data with its RIC product, opening it up to ISVs and the development community and adding the RIC to its growing telco cloud platform portfolio. Let's dive a little deeper into the motivations and impact we believe the RIC will have on service providers. Typically, at this point in any Open RAN discussion, an architecture diagram from the Open RAN Alliance would be shown. The challenge is that with technical standard labels like A1, the true meaning of what RIC is about can often be lost. Fundamentally, RIC is about allowing the distributed components of the RAM to be centrally controlled, with policy being passed to the RAM to support new use cases and approaches. The RIC is made up of two components, sadly very similarly named. The near real-time RIC for near real-time, sort of sub 10 milliseconds control loops, and the non-real-time RIC for longer timescale control loops, often AI-driven. Critically, the whole concept is backed by open access to data from the RAN on which policy can be based. Added to this is the ability of the controllers to support a pluggable app store of functionality, X apps for near real-time control and R apps for non-real-time control, allowing easy innovation agility. So let's look at the drivers for RIC. There is an increasing need for and the ability to have dynamic networks. The innovation gap between what is possible and what could be delivered with today's ways of working needs to be bridged. The RAN is an increasingly heterogeneous infrastructure where one vendor, one approach fits all, constrains innovation and automation. Operator agility and speed is limited by traditional equipment vendor release cycles and by their inherently constrained focus. Cloud changes everything particularly in allowing massive scaling of AI analysis to drive optimized networks. Geopolitics has highlighted the need for increased supplier security and diversity. Private networks are a completely new market for 5G, but with very different needs and ecosystems from traditional RAN. And finally, there are the new use cases beyond better consumer mass market broadband, like massive IoT applications, fixed wireless applications and low latency applications. So what are the benefits from the RIC? Firstly, and probably most importantly, energy saving. Optimizing for energy based on time, date, event, user profile, use case, beyond default standards set by traditional equipment vendors. Innovation, the increased ability to introduce new technology and use cases, optimized often with third party applications. Operator agility and speed, with the ability to introduce new RAN features quickly as part of the CICD pipeline, leveraging X apps and leveraging AI. The technical impact of the RIC will be significant too. It will require automation at every step, otherwise it simply won't work. It will require supply chain automation with continuous CICD and strong testing ecosystems with many partners. The RAN Edge will become a changing, shifting thing that requires security in depth and at a fractal edge. And lastly, the business impact. RIC will potentially drive new stratified business models. MNOs will not necessarily provide everything in a vertically integrated RAN network. Instead, others, including tower codes, neutral hosts, and even hyperscalers, could provide layered components of the network. RIP will require collaboration, often with co-opetition and ecosystems that can support this collaboration. RIC will 
probably allow network as a service capability within the RAN. And finally, it can give a different model for RAN development beyond the once in a decade hardware standard. RAN in a lot of areas can evolve with a software based standards iteration pace. Stephen, I will start with you. Why are CSPs interested in leveraging the Open RAN intelligent controller capabilities? And how is VMware addressing this demand? Francis, as you know, there's been a huge investment in 5G spectrum, coupled with obviously lower ARPU than expected. It's forcing CSPs to be way more judicious about their resource utilization, whether it's the spectrum, compute services, or any other services that they can monetize, they're coming from the underlying network itself. They want to be able to take advantage of that. CSPs are also facing growing complexity within the RAN, something that's bound to be more acute as we um, explore future generations of the network. Open RAN is giving CSPs unprecedented access to information, whether it's to the offering of services that they can monetize or actual information that they can utilize, such as cell location and actual radio data. The RIC is unlocking many of these capabilities and it's allowing CSPs to develop differentiated solutions and things to market to, to employ solutions that have collaborated on with ISVs in the marketplace and vendors like VMware. We're just scratching the surface here, but we're finally unlocking data that's been hidden underneath the surface for decades. And the RIC is going to help fuel innovation around better control over complex and disaggregated open RAN networks and improve security on what is becoming an expanded attack service for CSPs that they need to defend. Thanks, Stephen. Christina, if I can come to you next. VMware's RIC solution offers a deep access to data coming from the hardware layer, providing many of the capabilities Stephen mentioned. How is Intel driving this innovation? We are doing it through a combination of hardware and software innovation. Uh, for example, in the hardware side, we have our Intel Xeon uh, CPU processors, and they have built-in features and capabilities to uh, optimize, to help optimizing and deploying uh, AI and machine learning in both training and inferencing. For example, you take our third generation of Intel Xeon scalable processors, and they have built-in AI features, for example, our deep learning boost functionality with extensive software optimization. In addition to that, of course, we continue evolving the microarchitecture, we continue evolving the instruction set to reduce latency and uh, increase uh, throughput and performance. In the software side, we have uh, a, a great uh, uh, set of offerings, uh, both uh, coming from Intel and, and working with the open uh, source and the community uh, to, again, to accelerate uh, AI and machine learning. And uh, we have, for example, our uh, Intel neural network uh, APIs. Uh, we also have data analytics library, both uh, within the one API programming model for a, 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 a wide range of, uh, of hardware. Um, and uh, also we have uh, tools such as OpenVINO that provides AI model optimizer. We have uh, also optimized some of the commonly, commonly used framework uh, such as uh, TensorFlow and uh, PyTorch to run very efficient in, the, in our processors. Um, and of course, also we have, uh, very important for us, we have our FlexRAN reference software with all the real-time layer one data available. FlexRAN is the entire implementation of the layer one uh, workload. And uh, we have it completely uh, compliant with the all RAN E2 interfaces for RIC and XAPS and, and other apps. Uh, so it's a combination of uh, the, the, the processing power and the, the amount of software in the ecosystem. And very important, I would say also, is the collaboration and the, the working very closely with uh, VMware, be, between VMware and Intel to have a very optimized solution to have the best out of what uh, the network can offer. So following up on that, Christina, Intel is very active in the network innovation space what are some of the challenges the RAN Intelligent Controller can help service providers solve? 
the operators want their uh, network to be as efficient and as optimized as, po as possible, right? And Steve, uh, Steve was mentioning earlier to be very judicious with their resources, right? So this is where a virtualized RAN cloud native with an intelligent controller can uh, give a, a much more uh, a level of uh, degree of granularity to the management of that network and, and things like a rapid provisioning of the network, uh, a dynamic management, depending on the condition of the network, the traffic changes, the user changes, the up and down of the different network elements, applying the intelligence to that just give you a much better uh, management of that network and better utilization. Things, for example, like uh, quality of service or quality of experience, having uh, uh, being able to meet your SLA without having to over provision uh, your network. All these RIC provides those uh, machine learning, AI, deep learning algorithm that can uh, make uh, all these use cases and all these uh, requirements uh, very achievable. Um, take, for example, a resource utilization prediction algorithm, right? Going back to being very uh, judicious about your resources. Um, network slicing, which is so important in the uh, addressing of uh, use cases that are uh, a mission control kind of, uh, kind of use cases. Uh, traffic steering. All those are examples or, or what, how the operators can take advantage of RIG and, and the X apps and R apps uh, implementations and just uh, having a much better um, automated deployment of, uh, of applications and management of the network. And this is true both in the public network, but also private and uh, an enterprise. Stephen. What are the benefits of a VMware's RIC for the developer community? And why do you think VMware offers an attractive option for that community? Francis, to echo comments made by Christina a moment ago, VMware's RIC has deep integration with Intel's hardware. It leverages the FlexRAN APIs to deliver performance and scale for the virtual and open RAN infrastructure. The RIC was designed to host non-real-time and near-real-time workloads that can extract and serve the most critical and salient of data to improve RAN resiliency, performance, and efficiency. Our RIC SDK is making the development of RIC solutions faster and more integrated and much more meaningful than following generic APIs or special purpose apps, those from monolithic apps designed 10 years ago. VMware's RIC uses adapters to interface with previous generations of RAN infrastructure, protecting SP's previous investment while minimizing disruption. The popularity as well of VMware's platform as a ubiquitous virtual infrastructure and container as a service platform means that CSPs are standardizing on a well-known, well-understood, highly energy efficient and highly secure compute model to host their RIC X apps and R apps, as well as their Telco Cloud Core and RAN workloads. VMware is handling RIC X app and R app deployment across multiple virtualized RAN sites which enables CSPs to achieve higher operational agility at scale while they improve the efficiency and reliability of the RAN service. We are the RAN control plane for the modern open RAN and modern infrastructure. Thanks, Stephen. What should CSPs looking to secure their disaggregated RAN look for in RIC-based solutions? Francis, let's start with the foundations. Many solutions rely on Kubernetes and microservices, and that's a given today in the architectures we see. RIC applications should be isolated in order to prevent them from affecting or accessing each other's data. You cannot rely on perimeter-based security alone. The RIC's been engineered for security with, inner, with inherent safeguards for both X app and R apps, providing compliance with industry standards from the ORAN Alliance, 3GPP, Etsy, as well as VMware's own industry-leading software development guidelines and processes. It's important that our CSP customers look for solutions that follow these standards and others that provide guidelines on how the RIC should operate. These standards and specifications have been written by, by CSPs for CSPs. Important that you look for solutions that embrace that. In addition, we see X app and R app vendors in our ecosystem now focusing on areas beyond system level security, such as how to secure the RAN's radio frequency from malicious jamming or even intrusion. 
Aside from that, the same technology can prevent signal degradation and interference. This focus is even more important for enterprises who can utilize a RIC when operating private 5G. This will be the next step in where the technology is headed. A great answer, Stephen. Christina, if I can come to you next. The RIC is enabled by Open RAN adoption. Intel is a vocal proponent of Open RAN in his supporting rollouts with VMware at DISH in the US and recently trials with TIM in Italy. What are some lessons learned from those trials and how are these service providers looking to leverage the RIC? The benefits uh, that the operators and the industry in general will take out of uh, a cloud native Open RAN intelligent RAN are tremendous, right? You, we have, uh, Stephen and I have mentioned a few, even in the last uh, few minutes, automated deployment of applications as microservices, the ability to move the work, the workload within different uh, CPU cores for better utilization of the hardware and infrastructure, for example. Another one is the speed at which uh, we can bring inno innovative solutions to, to the network, all that will be will be there, right? And as you uh, as you mentioned, we have early adopters of these uh, leading technologies already uh, in the in the in the industry being the, deploying their their networks. We have, for example, you mentioned Rakuten that uh, already deployed their full automated end to end uh, cloud uh, cloud ran. Um, almost a year ago. Uh, we have also, as you mentioned too, Dish and Team always uh, also taking on that on that path. And we'll see more and more the operators who wanted to take advantage of this architecture and bring in the RIC uh, capabilities into their network. With um, this algorithm, this intelligent algorithm being deployed to the X apps and R apps and, and the RIC infrastructure, you'll see the operators being able to uh, manage their network better, uh, automated deployment and management, a spectrum efficiency, power management with the consequent uh, reductions on, on energy, uh, uh, more energy efficient, which is, a, you know, for many of us is a very important topic. So you see all these uh, being played there. The other thing that I would say, and you were mentioned about learnings, I think the fact that you can take these X apps and R apps and deploy them on the same infrastructure where many or all the rest of the workloads are running. If you take, for example, our Intel Xeon processor, they are deployed in data centers, in the clouds, all over the world. And now you are able to take this rig implementation, the X apps and R apps who were carrying, running those algorithms and deploying in that infrastructure without having to have any specialized uh, uh, hardware or, or processor on it. So that's a great advantage. And the other thing that I would say in the, in, in the, as far as learnings is again, I go back to all the work, all the collabor collaboration that Intel and VMware have uh, done through this, uh, this uh, program and uh, in, in getting, again, the most optimized solution, the pre-integration, the pre-validation, the optimization, the making sure that the requirements are met, the KPIs are met, everything comes together. I think it's, it, it's, uh, it's a very important that uh, collaboration and that goal of having that very well optimized, uh, best possible architecture for, uh, for the industry. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for this great discussion. I look forward to seeing how this space evolves overall, the open round that is, and Rick Innovation in particular. Thank you, Christina. And thank you, Stephen.